Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series on studying and living in Denmark. In the previous three videos, we discussed about studying masters in Denmark. Uh, what are the admission requirements? What is experience? Uh, and what is how do you apply for a full scholarship? So we have with us Anjali Burma. She is from India. She finished her masters in Denmark recently in Southern Denmark University. And in this video, we'll focus specifically on cost of living and we'll have some flavors about students' cost of living because Anjali will share her experiences. So let's start with the first question. Uh, what is the average cost of living per month considering different expenses? Maybe we can first move to the housing, like how much you pay each month for roughly for renting a house. Yes. So what you can do here is either you can uh, rent a student dorm here in uh, Denmark or you can find a private apartment which is being shared with three or four more students. So I would say an average would be between somewhere between 2,500 crowns to 3,000 crowns per month. Okay. And uh, yeah, so do you have this concept like, uh, like huge difference if you have like a private accommodation or if you have a shared accommodation, does the price vary a lot between... Uh, I don't think so because uh, in Denmark there's not much difference in housing when you come here. So when you live in a collegium, you pay around. Uh, uh, actually, here the collegiums are like of two types. The dorms are two types. The first is with your own kitchen, and the other one is with a shared kitchen. So if you take a dorm with shared kitchen, then it it costs you around two thousand three hundred crowns. Danish crowns and if you take the one with your own kitchen then it costs you 2700 Danish crowns but if you take a shared apartment with other students uh, with one common kitchen and uh, yes uh, their own, your own bedroom then it costs something between 2500 to 2700 Danish crowns Okay, and uh, maybe in the description below, we'll mention any websites if you know which might help in the search for houses. Yes, if someone I can, is, I can I can mention the uh, the link of the student dorm, which can help you in finding uh, your dorm here. But be very sure that they give uh, they for sure provide a dorm to international students because they know you are coming from a totally different country. So so they give preference to international students um, giving the dorm to them for first and then they give second preference to European students. Yes. So it's it, you mean like it's via the university, right? Like when you're applying for the university, they also help you along with the housing organization or something uh, to. No, actually, the housing is completely on uh, government. It's on the okay. government of Denmark. So there's a different link. But that housing, um, that dorm uh, is associated with my university. So, you know, they work together to give accommodation to international students to have their stay in comfort in, in Denmark. So it's like that. Okay. Uh, so uh, are the other expenses also included in your, like, for example, electricity, internet, and maybe water and other things, they are already included in the rent or yes, you pay them? They, they are already uh, included in the rent, but be very careful if you use the heat and water too much, then you have to pay extra. And if you do not use it too much, then you get some money back at the end of the year. So it's already included in the rent, but uh, you get according to what you use. Okay. And do you have an idea? Like if someone doesn't have that, how much will they pay uh, each month for like roughly for an individual if they pay like electricity do you have any idea like how much will they pay uh, actually uh, the electricity uh, the heat and the water is uh, uh, pre-included in your rent so okay. yes so uh, there's no way you can just pay your rent and pay the heat and electricity later it's not post it's pre-included in almost every housing in Denmark 
So uh, at the end of the year, they calculate how much you have used. And if you have used less than what you have paid, then they give you back. Okay. So moving on to the next expense, like how much can someone expect to pay for food? Like, for example, we can divide it into two parts. One is the raw materials that you buy to cook something and eat for a month. Or maybe what is the cost of expense when you eat outside in a restaurant or a quick fast food or a walk or something like that? A quick fast food here in Sonnaburg is McDonald's and it's cheap, like around 40 to 50 crowns. You will get a good burger and cola and everything. And so, yeah, it's quick fast food is quite cheap. I mean, if you come first from India, then you have a habit of converting, you know, Danish crowns to Indian rupees, how much it, it is. But then later you will find that um, even if you spend 40 to 50 crowns on uh, quick fast food, then it's cheap for here. But in Indian rupees, it may be a lot for some some people like 500 or 600. Yes, it is. But, you know, you will get habituated. So, yes. And for uh, cooking from a raw material, like buying everything and making food, I feel that's really cheaper here than going out in restaurant and eating. Because then you buy all the materials by yourself and cook for cook for yourself, so it's really cheaper. And uh, I think it costs around uh, one thousand five hundred Danish crowns per month, including your food and other 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 things. You know, like uh, maybe shampoo and soap and toilet paper and all those things. It, it's around uh, one thousand five hundred crowns according to your needs per month. Yes, but if you eat in restaurant, it's quite expensive here because you have to pay the tax as well. And uh, if you don't know, you should know that uh, Denmark is the country, is the only country in the world where you pay half of your salary in tax. So the taxes are really, really high here. So yes, that's that's the thing. That's why restaurants are very expensive here. Okay, I can totally agree because uh, as per my experience and whatever I've heard from others, uh, eating outside in most of the European countries, like maybe Western Europe and Scandinavian countries, it's really, really expensive. expensive yes, yes. So, yeah. So it's better you learn to cook, cook either yeah. by force or by like, yes. uh, just depending on how you have it. So moving on to the next expense, transport expenses so how is the like uh, just to give an example like for example we have like a universal card which we call ov chip yeah. card and that card gives us access when we top it up to all the transport like bus train metro tram everything so it's do exactly you have something same. like yeah. yes it's exactly same here somewhere in denmark as well you have a card called rajesa code and you, you can use that for for all everything and you should have it here because uh, the normal cost of transportation is higher. If you pay in cash, it's higher. And if you pay by that card, it's cheaper. So you should have that card. And plus, if you uh, if you are a student here, you get some discount in uh, in plane travels as well. For example, there is an airport in Sonobo called Alsi Express. And if you are a student, you get the flight tickets for really, really cheap. And here in Denmark, you have something called orange tickets in the train. So you get them really very cheap. So yeah, the transportation is more or less okay. But I would say that uh, in Denmark, most people prefer to have car because the transportation is quite, you know, lengthy. Like if you need to go from part point A to point B, maybe by bus it will take half an hour, but by car maybe it will take just 15 minutes. So yes, it's on you. But having a own car in Denmark is again very expensive because you have to pay a lot of taxes in a car plus on your insurance, car insurance. So yes, transportation is a little expensive here, but I think it's manageable if you have that card. Yes. Okay. And... Uh... Is it like, uh, so which one according to you is cheaper? Like uh, taking a air travel? I, I don't remember exactly the map of Denmark, but if you want to go from city A to city B, uh, going by, obviously going by air is much faster than going by your own car. 
but in terms of expenses, which one will be cheaper? Like, uh, I'm asking this question because a few days back I had an interview and someone said that in Norway, if you take air travel, it's much cheaper than any other form of transport. So that's why I had this question. Yes, in Denmark, if you take train transport, then it's really, really cheaper than any other form of transport. For example, from Sonneberg, I need to go to Copenhagen to take a flight for India. Then I pay just uh, 99 Danish crowns in, in train. That is an orange ticket. If you book it early, you get that orange ticket you can pay. But uh, if you are going by plane from Sonneberg to Copenhagen, uh, and you are a student, then you can pay around uh, 200 crowns if you book early. So, so train is the cheapest form of transportation in Denmark. Okay, so moving on to the next expense. Uh, do you have something like this concept like furnished house and unfurnished house when you rent a house? Do you have something like that? Yes. And if yes, then can you say like... Uh, I mean, the basic difference, like, for example, the furnished house, maybe like 500 euros a month or in terms of Danish crowns or the unfurnished is a bit cheaper. So do you know like the exact or roughly the difference between both? Yes. Uh, so I had a, a house with my own kitchen. And when you take a dorm with your own kitchen, then it's unfurnished. It means you would have only shelves for uh, in the kitchen and also a cupboard for your clothes and other than that you will have nothing so uh, you have to buy everything in an unfurnished house and I used to pay around 2700 crowns for that unfurnished house excluding the furnitures I bought the furnitures all by myself but there's a good thing here in Denmark that you can buy Secondhand things very cheap, so people oftenly buy secondhand things. Everything here, so you can easily get secondhand things, beds and uh, a couch, or, and uh, you know everything, a bike as well. So yeah, you can get uh, if you if you come here with an un unfurnished house, then I think in around eight hundred crowns you will get everything. Eight hundred to one thousand crowns you will get everything: a bed, a couch. Uh, maybe a little TV and a bike and uh, pants for kitchen, pants and pots for kitchen. And so you, you will get everything if you buy a second hand from second hand in, in Denmark here. Yes. Okay. And how is the IKEA culture? Like do people can, if someone wants to buy something new or they want to plan for settle for a longer duration and they have a family. So do you think like, uh, is it like a, because in most European countries, not European exactly, but in some countries you have this IKEA and you can go there and buy like A to Z everything. So do you also have that if someone wants to buy a new furniture or maybe everything for the house? Yes, I, actually, IKEA is a very good option for students because they have everything, A to Z, like you said, everything for very cheap. So, yes, uh, Danish people really love IKEA because they can get everything there. So, but yeah, yes, uh, as I said, it's on you. It's on your choices if you like to buy from IKEA or if you like to buy it secondhand. But if you get a furnished house, uh, then the expenses are quite low, like uh, the expenses are only... 2,300 crowns per month and uh, you will get one bed, one study table, one chair, one little fridge you will get and also you will get uh, uh, the cupboards for clothes and everything for the furnished and for unfurnished you will get cupboards, um, kitchen cupboards in for your wardrobe, you will get a fridge, a big fridge and you will get uh, some uh, like a uh, a basin in toilet and a mirror in toilet so yes so if i understand you correctly you pay more for rent for unfurnished yes oh that's strange like because normally i whatever i know uh, people pay less when the house is unfurnished because of the maintenance and other costs of the furniture which is retrieved from them yeah. but do you know why is it so like Yes, because in unfurnished, you get your own kitchen. And ah, in okay. furnished, you get a shared kitchen. So entire corridor, you will be sharing your kitchen with entire corridor in the dorm. Okay, now I get it. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. I had with my own kitchen. That's why I used to pay 2,700 crowns because, you know, we Indians are used to eat some spicy food and everything. Yeah. And yes. Uh, but uh, when you cook in the shared kitchen, you have to be little conscious about other people as well. You have to clean it regularly. You have to be conscious that you are not cooking something very spicy, which will disturb the entire corridor and everything. So that's why I had my own, own kitchen. Okay. Okay. So, how much can one expect for the insurance, like when a student comes for the insurance or maybe insurance for the working? Is it, is it, is it like you pay it separately or it is covered by someone? Because in some countries, I know they have a free uh, health care or something. We don't have it, but I'm just saying like. No, I don't have to pay any insurance here because the healthcare system is completely free in Denmark. So you have just you you should have just a yellow card when you come here from the municipality, which they call commune. And whenever you get sick, you just book an appointment and you go to their hospital. Everything is free. Even if you have something, you have broke your arm, you broke your leg and you need a surgery. That's even also free here in Denmark. So that's the very, very good point of saying in Denmark, you pay very high taxes, but you get the healthcare completely free. You get education completely free. So that's that's very good. And also you can like I am, I'm a student. So even if I am uh, indulged in some you know insurance thing it's free for me like two years it was free for me but when i start working i have to be part of something called a case so i have to pay some money every three months and if i lose my job then you are also secured the a case will pay you money for around two years and help you finding another job so i would say that danish society danish government is socialist that's why it's 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 so developed and that's why people are so happy here. They're, they're really proud of their system because they pay a lot of taxes, but they get back everything and of super quality. Yes. Okay. So are there any other student expenses that comes on the top of your mind now? Like any other student expenses? Uh, I don't think so. But yeah, when you come to Denmark, uh, you cannot uh, bring clothes from India because they will not work. The winter clothes from India will not work. So you have to be a little prepared while coming in Denmark that you have to spend around 1,000 or 2,000 crowns in buying some really good winter clothes because it's it's the temperature here goes uh, around... Uh, minus three, minus four. I mean, it's not in the weather. When you see the weather, it does not show minus three and minus four. It shows around one or two, but you feel like minus three and minus four here. Like in European countries, we have a concept of feel like temperature and actual temperature. So you have to be really uh, prepared because the temperature you feel will be around minus and the winds are really strong here. So you have to have some very good clothes. So keep that in mind when you come here to bring some extra money for clothes. Okay. So the final question relates to my experience in Netherlands because we have this huge bike culture. Yes. So is also bike is uh, like considered as a mode of transport in Denmark or is it more like sports recreation instead of regular mode of transport if in Denmark and how much does it cost to buy a bike if people buy it? Uh, if you buy a second-hand bike then it costs around 200 Danish crowns to 500 Danish crowns but if you really want a good bike like yeah Danes are crazy about biking so you can get it as as much as 30,000 Danish crowns 30 to 50,000 Danish crowns so yeah it depends on your choices uh, but you, you you really need to have a bike uh, if you live in Denmark because it's the part of their culture. They use bike a lot in everything. And when you also live here, you you will see that you need to bike from your dorm to your university because it's like three kilometers from your dorm to your university. So you need to bike and you need to bike for food and for shopping and everything. So bike is really the first priority when you come to Denmark. The cheapest mode of transportation, I would say, for short distances. Yes. 
Okay. So thank you Anjali for giving your time and uh, I hope you like this video then don't forget to smash the like button share this video with people who want to come to Denmark in the future and subscribe to the channel. See you in the upcoming video where we are going to discuss about uh, working in Denmark so that you know how you earn money and what is the work culture and how you can fund yourself. So see you in the upcoming vlog till then bye.